you have to help yourself. How can you master yourself? Discipline. You have to discipline yourself. Nobody can help you. You have to help yourself. If you don't discipline yourself, how can you move your life forward? Impossible. There's all simple way to make excuses. You have to always challenge yourself to sharp your life. Our lives, just like sharper blade, you don't use it, you don't keep sharp it, become rusty. That's why I always say that. Yeah, sharp your blade, sharp your life. It's hard to believe the time it's been since January 6th took place and how far we've come. You know, as we stand here in the shadow of our nation's capital, it strikes me of what an iconic building this is and has always been. A representation, a physical representation of all of the values that we in this country hold dear. I often tell the story, I, I come in on the train because I am a congresswoman from New Jersey. And so I come in on the train and as we're driving to the Capitol from Union Station, I often can't help but be amazed that that's my office. That's where I get to work. And that sense of awe has carried with me up until this day. So with that in mind, you can imagine how hard it was for me to believe, even as I was sitting on the floor of the house that our beloved Capitol was being attacked by American citizens sent over by the President of the United States because he didn't want to leave office in our democracy. And I remember so vividly crouching in the gallery of the house. That was the last area to be evacuated. We watched the floor be evacuated. I often tell friends now, if you see the Secret Service come and grab the Speaker of the House, that's a good time to leave the floor of the house. But we didn't. We were in the gallery. We were hoping we could certify our elections, as was our constitutional duty. And so as I was there, I was crouched down because we were concerned about active shooters. I was holding my cell phone in one hand to call my family as other members were calling their families because they were afraid they weren't going to make it out of the gallery. And I had a gas mask in the other hand because we were concerned of the rioters if they broke through those barricades. I sat there and I had two things in mind that day. On one side, I had this great sense of sorrow that it had come to this, that our nation was so divided that people who were misled, as Jason said, veterans on both side of, sides of those doors would come and attack our capital. And then the other side of my brain had really a sense of rage. How dare they? How dare they? And yet as I sit here today, as I think about how far we've come with the January 6th hearings, with the people in elections all across this nation who repudiated those who would deny our elections, those who would deny our democracy, I feel a new sense of hope. I'll give you a little bit of the inside scoop on the Capitol. Many of the members hate this green pin. They think it's a ridiculous color. But I gotta tell you as I stand here today, I think it's great. I think it symbolizes new hope. I think it symbolizes a new start to our democracy. And as I stand here with these veterans, as I stand here with these other veteran members of Congress, I can tell you that we are prepared and ready for this new start. We are prepared and ready to make sure that going forward, our democracy is stronger and more resilient than ever. And so it's with almost a sense of joy that I start this new term in Congress because I know the American people have our back. I know these veterans are never gonna forget their oath to the Constitution and are always gonna fight to protect and defend our Constitution against enemies, both foreign and domestic. 
We will keep up that fight. And we know you're all with us. Thank you for coming here today to make sure that we can always remember what we're fighting for and why it's so important. And I'll end like everybody else. God bless the United States of America. Este vato se mira que tira chingos de pipe. Well, he just got half of the stadium pregnant with that look. You know, le fumando un pinche cigarro tirando gang size. Looking like he just left a Nicaraguan prison. Looking to pound all the puss. Que va a ser el wey. Que va a ser el vato. No digas que he's going to ride a bull. Oh, pues parate wey. Parate hold on to the bull wey. Le vale verga wey. He's just, this is, con el pinche cigarro todavía en la pinche boca wey. Le vale verga todos los, get out of there. Rodeo clouds, you know what? He's just like, give it, give it all to me, give it all to me, bull. No, he's still holding on. Well, oh, no, he's. Oh, I thought he was done for. This, this is the greatest athletic achievement I have seen in my life, bro. Oh, this is better than Kobe's 81 point game, than Usain Bolt's 100 meter dash, man. This is breaking all sorts of physics. What's the beach in my. One day, this little girl came to me and said, Miss Kyra, Miss Kyra, can girls go to college? Wow. And I looked at her and I said, yes, I'm a girl, I'm in college. And she turns to the little girl next to her and says, see, I told you. Little girls saw themselves in Kyra Harris Bolden. This has been a long journey for all of us. Today, for the first time, they can look up and see what else they could be. Kyra will be the first black woman ever to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. Kyra. And with that, history was made as Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer appointed Bolden to the state's highest court. 185 years we've never had an African-American woman on the state's highest court. It's about damn time. It's just been an honor um, and just been so surreal uh, to um, be appointed to the highest court in the state of Michigan and be responsible for some really important decisions. What do you think makes you tear up? Oh, um, because this means so much to so many people. Justice Bolden's journey to this court, though, began nearly a century ago with a tragedy. Jesse Lee Bond, my great-grandfather, was lynched in Tennessee in 1939 after asking a store owner for a receipt. And he was beaten and castrated and thrown into the local river, um, and the coroner deemed it an accidental drowning. And as a result, his murderers walked free. That injustice drove Bolden to law school. Once I realized that that was something that happened in my own family. Less than uh, 100 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, I just, felt the, the need to be a part of the justice system and to go to law school and find my way in, in that. Is your great-grandfather's lynching the reason you believe you became a lawyer? It was definitely a large part of it. She would go on to serve two terms in the state legislature and then take a leap, a chance at making history. We need to make sure that we have justices on our Michigan Supreme Court that believe in equal justice under the law. She didn't win that race, but when a seat on the court opened up this summer, she was the governor's first choice. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. Her daughter Emerson, not yet five months old, too young to know the history her mother has made. Emerson, in just a few generations, our family has gone from lynching to law school, from injustice to a capital J justice. From uh, injustice to capital J justice is really just it's, just, it's amazing. It's amazing that we can make this type of progress for our family. What do you say to people who look at the state of racism in America today and don't see it as, as enough progress? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not, it's not enough. It's absolutely unacceptable that in 2022, we are just now having the first black woman on the Michigan Supreme Court. There has never been a black woman that's been a governor in, in the United States history, right? It's not acceptable, but we still have to work hard and we still have to try to break down these barriers. And 2022, it took till now to get the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme yes. Court. Yes, yes. 
You know, yeah. when you think about Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, just a few months before you. Yes, yes. What you think? Yeah, I, I think it's one of those moments where you know what's possible, right? Um, you know, the same way that people have said that they look at me, the same way I look at her. Really? It, I mean, she she's amazing, but she is a representation yeah. of what is possible. Are we fired up? Yeah! Are we ready to go? Yeah! Justice Bolden will be unique on this court as the only justice who was previously a state lawmaker. So that also, though, opens the door to other critics mm -hmm. who say, well, you're a Democrat, mm -hmm. you're partisan, you know, you served in the legislature, you ran as a Democrat. How do you shed that? All judges and justices have personal points of view. You know, so I don't think I'm different in that. My job as a justice is to interpret the laws. We have the opportunity to protect justice for generations to come. Did you know that? In a fitting full circle, she will fill the seat of Chief Justice Bridget McCormick, whose campaign was the first she worked on a decade ago. The state is getting a smart, savvy, and hardworking public servant as its newest justice. I know the weight of this job. I know what it means. It's always been my goal to pull people with me, you know, Vice President Kamala said, maybe the first but not the last, yeah. right? And that's just kind of the mantra that, that I live by. One day this little girl came to me and said, Miss Kyra, Miss Kyra, can girls go to college? Wow. And I looked at her and I said, yes, I'm a girl, I'm in college. And she turns to the little girl next to her and says, see, I told you. Little girls saw themselves in Kyra Harris Bolden. This has been a long journey for all of us. Today, for the first time, they can look up and see what else they could be. Kyra will be the first black woman ever to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. Kyra. And with that, history was made as Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer appointed Bolden to the state's highest court. 185 years we've never had an African-American woman on the state's highest court. It's about damn time. It's just been an honor um, and just been so surreal uh, to um, be appointed to the highest court in the state of Michigan and be responsible for some really important decisions. What do you think makes you tear up? Oh, um, because this means so much to so many people. Justice Bolden's journey to this court, though, began nearly a century ago with a tragedy. Jesse Lee Bond, my great-grandfather, was lynched in Tennessee in 1939 after asking a store owner for a receipt. And he was beaten and castrated and thrown into the local river. Um, and the coroner deemed it an accidental drowning. And as a result, his murderers walked free. That injustice drove Bolden to law school. Once I realized that that was something that happened in my own family. Less than uh, 100 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. I just felt the, the need to be a part of the justice system and to go to law school and find my way. Shaolin martial arts is in use for street fight. Yes or no? I'll give you both answer. All the martial arts, every single discipline can be used in a street fight, can not be used in a street fight. Some people practice martial arts for whole life, 60, 70, 80 years doesn't know how to fight. Some people never practice martial arts, never understand martial arts means. Some people never understand, you know, discipline, BJJ, Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, Muay Thai. They can fight. You know why? Free. Free your heart, free your mind. You don't think. Yeah. If you have to fight, if you have to protect yourself, you have to defend other people. You practice martial arts, so probably you've been told that way. Should I punch first? Should I jam first? Should I uh, headbutt? So I use my shoulder. It doesn't matter if you understand yourself. If you make so yourself excellent, every martial arts, every single discipline can be used in a street fight.